Kia ora. Welcome back to Sloan Ranger Studio. Today we've got Ragnar back on the painting table and uh, we're going to be looking at uh, all of that fur that he's got going on. Um, he's got a big old pelt. Uh, he's got... Oh, he doesn't have any danglies. Sometimes they have the danglies, but this guy doesn't have any danglies. Uh, I, I don't know what they are. Like wolf tails? Are they good luck? They're like a good luck charm? They're like a ra rabbit's foot? Anyway, there's none of those on Ragnar, so it's just like a big, big old cloak. So we're going to be looking at doing a little bit of wet blending on him, yeah. Fur is like a really good opportunity to kind of blend out some browns, and so that's what we're going to be doing today. We've got just a small handful of browns and whites, a little bit of a wash, got to use a wash. Uh, it's going to be fun, it's going to be easy, looking forward to it. Let's get into it, eh? Yo, yo, so here is Ragnar, the way we left him after the last episode, well, the first episode. You can see that dramatic blue that we were talking about. Um, what we're going to be looking at today, obviously, is this big, dirty wolf pelt that's hanging off him. Um, and I tell a lie, he does actually have a dangly. He's got a dangly, like, right here. Um, but it was hard to see, because it just kind of blends into everything else. But anyway, got all this fur. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be wet blending three colors to begin with on this. And so I'm going to be using Rhinox Hide right towards the center of the pelts. And then we're going to blend out towards a bit of Mornfang Brown. And then right towards the ends and the like the kind of the fringes of the cloak is Rakarth Flesh. It's a nice kind of earthy off-white. So first thing we're going to do and when it comes to wet blending, it helps to have thinned paint. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of our darkest colour here. We're going to pick where the kind of centre point is. We don't really have to pick. Centre is pretty objective. You get what I mean? So we've got this like brown and we're just going to pour this brown. Not heavy heavy, but you know, somewhat somewhat heavy. We want to keep the, the layer thick and wet. Excuse my French. We want to rinse off our brush, get our Morn Fang, which has also been thinned, and then on the outside of that we're just gonna just gently, gently blend the two together. You'll have to top up your brush as you're doing this. And all I'm doing is I'm just kind of going back and forth over the two colors, letting them kind of mix and mingle and you know you don't have to be too uh, precise with this you know in fact the less precise the better because it's quite an organic organic thing so yeah we're keeping our Morn Fang nice and wet blending it over that brown towards the outside and then as we get towards the bottom here we leave that nice rinse off the brush and come in for the third color which is our white, and this one's going to be a little bit trickier. Let's see. Just and take off any excess, and this is when you can just kind of feather the between the two. And you'll see it starts to blend nice and easily because the colors are wet. It's kind of like you're just mixing colors on your palette. And so what I do is I, I do the little, the kind of, the feathery, the feathery step first. Kind of let the two colours blend together. And it's already feeling really natural, you know. Taking off any excess on my finger. starting to dry up now so getting close towards the end of this just go back over and feather some of those transitions just just kind of adding a little stipple effect between the two colors getting the getting the mix and mingle and there we go we've got ourselves a nice and easy little blend there and so that hasn't gone all the way to the edges so now I'm just going to take some pure rack off and finish off towards the edges of this pelt trying not to interfere with that blend that we just did so 
So leaving some pure rack off towards the edges and we'll come down and we'll base coat the rest of this. And of course, being careful not to uh, <laughs> get rack off all over our lovely blue armor. All right, so there you go. And then, if you find that you know you've over over blended, or you know you've put too much of the rack off down, and you're losing some of the brown, just thin down some of the mornfang, and just kind of just over over that transition area put some back in and if it's nice and thin you know it'll react with the with the darker brown and it'll react with the rack off as well and this is just a nice little correction step if you feel like it which I feel like I have lost a little bit of the warm fang in some of these areas up here we want to keep that nice warm brown in there awesome that's looking pretty cool so what you got to do is you've got to do that all over this third area so you know pick the the center so it'll be like down this middle part here will be your brown so I'll just kind of roughly roughly lay it out so yeah roughly around there around is the head of this wolf it'll be sort of down the, the center of its head I, I would predict you know, it would have like a little dark patch be kind of cute little dark patch, maybe the dark patch runs all the way down this, down its snout. But yeah, so go around and wet blend that fur and, you know, touch it up and tweak it as much as you feel like, but you know, it's organic, so don't be too stressed about perfect blends here, because we're going to be adding a wash, we're going to be highlighting all this fur. There's lots to come yet. This is just laying out a really great foundation of colour for us. Alright, so we've gone and wet blended all of those browns all over Ragnar here and you can see how it starts to make that wolf pelt look pretty realistic. Which is what I like about wet blending is that it feels quite um yeah, it feels quite natural, you know. It's kinda how kinda how it all comes together in the real life. Anyway, next step is to add a wash. And so normally, you know, egg racks would be a good call here, but today I feel like trying something different. So I'm going to be going with a bit of a mix of contrast paints here. So we've got this Wildwood and Contrast Medium here to help thin it down because this is like, this is deep dark brown on its own. So we want to thin it down. So I've got about a four to one mix over here. So there's four to one mix. I'm just taking a generous amount and I'm just going to pour it, not literally, but pretty much literally all over all of this fur here and that is going to make us look like we're a pro painter for a brief moment because all those shadows and everything like that are going to get revealed you know it's gonna fall into all these gaps it's beautiful so add this uh, add this mix all over your furred areas and um, let that dry and we'll come back for the next step okay I've gone and added that wash and you can see it's uh yeah it's brought everything down quite a bit um, might have got the ratio a little bit dark so maybe thin it a little bit more when it comes to doing your own or if you like the look of this go for it I kind of like the dark yeah it's gonna make that uh, that step of highlighting that much more rewarding but anyway what we're going to do now is just go back to our original three colors, the Rhinox, the Rakarth, and the Mornfang, and we're just going to lightly just kind of overbrush. And so what I what I mean by that is I take just a little bit and I'm just kind of skimming the surface with the side of my brush. And that's just going to help pick out a couple of details and just bring bring some of this color back into our um, into our fur because yeah it did darken it down quite a bit but it's no biggie so yeah just go back around and just kind of brush back over and then we'll be ready to start doing some proper highlights yeah, 
brush back over leaving that dark in the recess so that was with the Morn Fang now the Rakarth oops I have somehow got a splash of water in my rack up over here. So it's very thin, but a little bit. Not too much to take some excess off, so off if you need to. Just come back. Just kind of overbrush it. Just kind of skim back over it all. And you can see it starts to bring a little bit more of that color back into it. So go around and do that all over that fur. It should only take you a couple of minutes. Alright, so we quickly went around and brushed back over some areas with our original colours there and just brought back those layers up for us, but now we are ready to do some highlights and so there are going to be three initial highlights because we've used three initial colours and if we use the one colour to highlight all three of these colours it's going to look a little bit fudgy. So we're going to be highlighting each of these kind of original colours uh, separately. So the first one is going to be using Baneblade Brown over the darkest areas of the fur. Uh, so I've thinned it down, we're just taking a tiny little bit on our brush, we're just picking out the fur areas right towards the center, you know, always always pulling, pulling the paint towards the end of the hair. We're just going to start picking out all the little sort of clumps of fur so you don't have to be too exact on like which which dark hairs you want to highlight with which because we'll be tying it all together with our final highlight but for now, we want to kind of keep our original colors somewhat, so go around and start adding in that, uh, that Bane Blade highlight there across all of those dark browns, and we'll come back for the next highlight. Okay, we've gone and highlighted all that darker brown area across the wolf, the wolf pelt I should say. Uh, the next step is to do the uh, kind of mid-tone brown, that Morn Fang, and so we're going to be pulling out Old Faithful Scrag for that, which is uh, you know, just a natural step up from Morn Fang. It's not too bright, so it's not going to, um, yeah, it's not going to jump too sharply, kind of like that Bane Blade from the brown. It was quite a jump, but uh, once you once you see how it's going to turn out, all of these should make sense. So anyway, we've got the Scrag brown thinned down, and it's just the same thing really. We're just going to go around and pick out all of these bits in the middle and it should start to help tie it all together and you can kind of stray a little bit with this mid-tone you know kind of put a couple on the darker put a couple on the lighter kind of help bridge the gap between the two colors so you know not taking over and not doing the entire strand but you know just towards the towards the center of these uh, strands of fur these locks you anyway, know so we're just going around and pouring in this uh, this scrag letting it uh, sorry letting it lift up that that warm brown that we had going on So yeah, work your way around and highlight all of that Mornfang area. And uh, yeah, don't forget that you can kind of stray into the other two, the other two colors if you feel like it. You know, it's a it's a pelt. It's not a you know it's not something man-made, so it's not like it has rules. Um, you know, you can kind of do whatever you feel like with it. So yeah, have fun. Alright, so we've gone and added in that step of the uh, Scrag Brown there. And, uh, you know, started to started to bring the colours back together. But we're up to our last, well, not, not our penultimate highlight, really. It is the, um, yeah, it's this paler colour. So we're going to be using uh, Flayed One Flesh for this. Um, when it comes in focus. Flayed One Flesh, it's a bit of a, kind of, it's another off-white 
it's a little bit brighter than Rakarth. It's got a hint of yellow in it, so it should combo well with this uh, more orangey fur tone that we were just using. So I'm thinned it down. You don't want much on your brush. Thinned it down. And uh, yeah, we're coming into these uh, last strands here. So brightening them back up. This is the, the area that was originally Rakarth. So. so this is right towards the edges now. Yeah. When you see a nice pronounced bit of fur, you can save yourself some time by whipping out the edge of your brush. Be careful when you do it though, because you know it's quite quite easy to slip. But for the most part, you know, try not to get try not to get too lazy. I have a tendency to get lazy and impatient and just want it to get done. So I'll start like edge highlighting and then I'll slip and you know it's not every bit of fur is like as equally deep as the, as the next bit of fur so you know you, you think you get into a, a pattern of edge highlighting and then you come up to one and it's not like a good enough edge for the way you've been doing all the rest and uh, shazam you got yourself a big sloppy highlight but anyway go around and uh, add in this flayed one flesh to all of the uh, Rakarth areas and uh, you know like we were doing with the other one every now and then you can can bring one in over the uh, over the brown start tying them all together but when it comes to areas such as these little bits of toes what I like to do is I like to just do a little bit of a stipple and that just looks like there's some like smaller fur there yeah just a little bit of a, a little bit of a stipple same with like this the snout of the wolf up here. Just some little little stipples. And that just kind of makes it look like the fur is much finer in around that area. So yeah, work your way around with that color and we'll come back for our final highlight. Right on. So we've gone and added in that flayed one flesh. Uh, to all of our Rakarth areas and you can see I've started to sort of dot it around some of the other uh, deeper darker browns as well and this helps tie it all together you know you start seeing this now and you think it actually looks a little bit more like fur than what it was before but we've got one last step and that is just our final highlight which in this instance we are using pallid witch flesh which is very bright off-white and it's perfect for these um, kind of extreme highlights on natural areas and so just towards the very tips of uh, you know the more pronounced hairs now they're just adding in some very extreme white you know every now and then like I was doing with the step before you might want to come back and just make one of these hairs just pop out like it's catching a little bit of light it just helps the tie it all together and don't overdo this um, you know in in the middle areas here because it will start to look just you know, it'll stop looking like our timber wolf and start looking like a, I don't know, maybe like an arctic wolf. Which is fine, if that's what you want to do. But in this case, we're going for a more timber wolf look. So, go around and, uh, yeah, highlight out those brighter areas and, you know, and the knuckles, the knuckles of this, uh, this wolf's paw here. Pop those out with a few brighter stipples. You know. Definitely towards the, the tip of this. This dangly. And uh, yeah, definitely around the snout, maybe even just like a little dot on his uh his cute little cute little wolf wolf nose. A little dot in his eye. Yeah, it's a dead wolf. So his eyes are kind of black and glossed over. But uh that is our last step so go around and highlight all of these areas left tying it all together for our last little bit and then we'll see the final result cool there is our uh, wolf pelt that uh, gets draped over top of Ragnar's shoulder there it's a big old timber wolf 
would have been about the size of Regna when it was uh, fully alive. Fully alive. <laughs> alive. Anyway, so yeah, I hope you like it. There was um, not too long, I hope. Not too many steps. It's all pretty simple stuff. The, uh, the trickiest part is that wet blend. Um, but the only tricky part is just getting your head around that it's not that complicated at all. You're literally just smashing two wet paints together. So I hope um, I hope that wasn't too complicated and I hope it all came across on camera nicely. So I think next up we'll um, look at the other part of the cloak there which is... I'm not sure if I want to make that red or if I want to make that black or if I want to make that like skin. Like it could just be like the tanned hide of the underside of the fur pelt. I'm not sure yet so um, I'll have a think about that and think about what's best. Um, I'm leaning towards red purely because this is for my Space Wolf army and I know that there's a lot of other red kind of going on um, throughout the rest of my force. So I hope you like it and I hope you like my content. If you do, please subscribe, uh, like it, share it around your mates who may be painting Space Wolves or maybe painting anything furry at all. And if you feel like shouting me a coffee or, you know, helping me out with uh, buying brushes and paints and whatnot, I have a Patreon. But uh, as I've mentioned, everything I do will always be free. Patreon is purely to support me if you feel like it. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not going to gatekeep any of my content. It's always going to be free on YouTube. Uh, Patreon is just a nice way for you to support me if you feel like it. But anyway, hope you like it. Looking forward to seeing you for the next one. And uh, yeah, happy painting team.